Guys, I have to say, I was surprised. There's nearly 20 free ways to earn books, gems, and shards each and every month. Let's get into it. What's going on, guys? Tyraku here. I hope you are all doing great. So today, in the spirit of my free-to-play account, the new series that I started at the beginning of the year, this is not my free-to-play account, by the way, but I have to use this one because my free-to-play doesn't have access to everything. But when I first started that account, I quickly realized that Raid has come a long way since when I first started playing. Granted, there has been a lot of stuff added, but there's a lot more ways to earn free resources, specifically shards and books is what I'll be focusing on today. But most of these ways include gems and energy as well, chickens and all those other resources you need. So a lot of these are going to be moved through pretty quickly. I've got quite a bit to go through. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, guys, and let me know what you think. Also, if I missed something, which I don't think I did, I tried to go through this list several times before sharing this with you guys, but if I did miss something, leave it down in the comment section below. Check my pinned comment. If anybody's left anything, I'll definitely add it to the pinned comment section. But the very first thing is the daily login, okay? So daily login rewards, um, 271 plus used to be back in the old days, back in the good old days, a sacred shard on day 30. Unfortunately, it's not there no more, but we're not here to complain. Either way, we do get some shards throughout the month. Every, every month you're playing the game, you're going to get some shards from the initial login stuff to day 271 plus. So you can be reliant on the fact that, hey, you're going to get some shards, you're going to get some books, so on and so forth. Then the next thing, it's a daily quest. Okay, so we have daily quests where you're going to get 10 gems essentially each day, and you're going to be working towards eventually getting this ancient shard once per week. And then you're going to be doing the monthlies where you're getting a sacred shard and a void shard as well. We also have advanced quests. Now, advanced quests don't have shards, but they do give you gems, energy, books, epic tome, and legendary tome every so often. So they're definitely worth doing and definitely worth making sure you're doing all this stuff to really maximize the amount of free resources you're getting, especially like I mentioned. So much stuff has changed with that. A lot of these new legendary champions require more legendary books. So just because Player M's giving a lot more avenues to get these resources, doesn't mean things are staying the same. I mean, you can see it in OG champions requiring few books versus new champions requiring a ton of books. Pixneal requiring 18, for example. The next thing is daily clan chest, okay? Some people may miss this, but make sure every time you check in, make sure you're also getting your clan activity stars if at all possible, because you're gonna be working towards this clan chest. This clan chest can have shards, it can have energy, um, I think it can have some gems, it can have a rare book, can have some silver, so definitely do that. I've gotten a few ancient shards from that, and when it, when it happens, definitely nice. But make sure you're logging in, make sure you're checking in, making make sure you're doing your stars. Which if you hit this little eye circle button right here, you can actually see how you get all the stars for each day. The first one is just from checking in. So login, super simple, super easy. Make sure you're doing that. The next way I want to talk about is something else that's also daily activity you can do, and I highly recommend doing it no matter where you are in the game, and that is the clan boss. So come in here to the clan boss. You can see exactly what you can earn. Literally go to any clan boss difficulty, click the little chest button on the side, and hit drop info, and you can see the potential rewards, the potential plunder, I guess you could get, from each one of these chests. So the potential loot, I guess you could say. Um, so obviously the easy clan boss doesn't give a ton, but it does give you a chance of getting some shards. I've actually got a few on my free to play account, but when you get to the ultra nightmare level, you're going to be getting one. If you assuming you kill ultra nightmare and nightmare clan boss, you could be getting two chests from ultra nightmare, two top chests. So two chances at getting some really good rewards as well as two chests from nightmare from the top chest. Also a potential to get some really good rewards. So clan boss, make sure you're doing that every day. I think everybody should know that, assuming you've played raid for any time at all. But if you didn't know that, definitely make sure you are doing that. The next thing I want to talk about is um, some of the progressional rewards, okay? So we have the campaign. Obviously, if you're not doing this, make sure you're going through and three-starring all these areas in the campaign. Um, to get three stars on the campaign missions, you have to use two or fewer champions with no losses. So go through there, get all that. These rewards are very, very nice, especially when you're first up and coming. I mean, we have normal, hard, brutal, and nightmare. So all those areas, definitely make sure you do that. If you guys get stuck specifically, a hard sticking point is stage 12-7. If you guys have questions, definitely leave them down below. Join the Discord. Join the Twitch channel whenever I go live over at twitch.tv forward slash Tyraku. I can hopefully help you guys out because that is a sticking point for a lot of people. And it's pretty difficult. It does require some specific champions. But once you do finish it, you do get a sacred shard. So it's a very nice system right there. Um, speaking of progression rewards, we literally have progression rewards right here. So level 5, 10, all the way up to level 100. Um, the rewards past 60... I mean, we have some legendary books, so I guess they are pretty good. Um, it just takes so long to actually level up. It feels like it 
feels like it takes so long in between his rewards, but make sure that you're keeping an eye on this. You'll probably have the red dot pop up, but jump in there, claim these rewards. I mean, hey, free rewards up to level 100. Once you hit level 100, there's nothing past that, of course. The next thing, also progressional type reward, is Faction Wars. So they just now opened up Shadowkin Faction Wars. So if you miss Lydia, I'm sorry. Hopefully you can clear Shadowkin pretty quickly. But if not, as you're going through Faction Wars, which hopefully most of you guys are working towards three-starring all the stages, working towards getting Lydia, but this is definitely a great way to earn some pretty easy rewards, depending on how your teams are. But over time, you're going to get these rewards. Quite a bit of rewards and pretty impactful. I mean, we have several Sacred Shards. We have three there, four, quite a bit. So definitely work on your Faction Wars if you haven't already. The next area is Doom Tower. So Doom Tower, absolutely stocked with rewards, and I love it. So the rewards in Doom Tower are definitely worth making sure you do on them each rotation. If you can do hard and normal, do both of them, okay? We have some Void Shards spread out, some Legendary Books, um, some Sacred Shards. Awesome, awesome rewards from Doom Tower. Um, from normal, you even have great rewards there, especially if you're a free-to-play player. This is like a dream come true. You're, this is definitely worth climbing. Um, kind of difficult depending on how early you are in the game. You may not be able to climb very far, but definitely pick up these low-level re rewards if you can because, hey, free rewards are free rewards, and there's really nothing better than that. The next thing is missions and challenges, and please, this mission is ridiculous, okay? I absolutely hate this mission, but we are two max glyphs away from finishing it missions definitely please please focus on these do these because you're really going to regret it if you don't do your missions and the challenges is usually an icon right here unfortunately i don't well fortunately i don't have that the reason why i say fortunately is because a lot of those missions are super i guess mundane kind of boring monotonous and it's like do Karak castle or do sewers of arnok on normal difficulty which when you're low level those are no problem, right? If you're early in the game, not a problem going back to normal campaign. But if you're level 60, level 100, whatever it is, and you're having to go all the way back to these early stages of the campaign, yeah, you can do them a lot faster, but you're not really getting the same value doing that then versus you would be if you did it when you first started. But if you haven't done them yet, definitely jump in and do them because the longer you wait, the worse and worse it's going to feel. Definitely. Okay. So make sure you go ahead and clear those. Got some pretty good rewards as well. Shards, books, the whole nine yards. Very, very nice. The next thing is tournament placing and events. Now, this is actually something that's fairly new. Used to, they didn't have all these chances to earn ancient shards in some of these tournaments. So like Ice Golems, um, first through fifth. And this is with a lot of the dungeon tournaments now. You can get ancient shards throughout, which I really, really like this. Some of these like um, Ice Golem, pretty easy to get placed high enough to actually get an ancient shard. So if you haven't been focusing on this, definitely work on this. Sometimes these side rewards, like for Ice Golem, I typically don't get them, but you can get an epic book. You can get some gems. Definitely, if you need to farm Ice Golem, it's worth it. And then you can pick up an ancient shard as well along the way. Um, a lot of the tournaments have been having pretty decent placing rewards if your bracket's not super intense. And then the tag team arena ones typically have pretty good rewards as well, at least on these side rewards right here. The... Um, Tournament bracket placings, usually no shards and books until you get to this top two levels right there where we have the epic tomes. The next thing is the events. The events, you got to sometimes plan them out for these, of course, because the shards and books are always at these higher levels. So not everybody's going to go get them, of course, but very good way if you plan your resources, if you use your stuff at the correct times, you can definitely go ahead and pick up several uh, legendary books when they have the summon events, summon rushes, and so on and so forth, and pick up some ancient shards along the way if you're farming a lot in the other dungeons. The next area, and these ones are very, very new, okay? Now, I don't actually have the button, but CVC. CVC personal rewards as well as CVC milestone rewards. So if you're in a clan, hopefully your clan is pushing hard enough to where you can at least get the milestone rewards. If you're not getting the personal rewards, not a, not a huge deal because you can only get those if you win. Not every clan is going to win every single CVC with the personal rewards. So get what you get. If you can get the personal rewards, go for it. They're great. But if not, not a huge deal. But they do typically have some shards, some books, um, some energy, a lot of really good rewards in the personal stuff, but you do have to win CVC. And sometimes that can end up being you spend a ton of money or a ton of resources to get a fraction of the amount back. But it is two ways you can you can get them. The next place I want to talk about is the 3v3 Bazaar. And if you're not doing 3v3, please jump in there and do that. This is another thing that people really neglect a lot. That's 3v3. You can pick up some sacred shards, some chickens. Now, this is all in gold 3v3, so you do have to be ranked up high enough to get that. But in silver, you can pick up a void shard. You can pick up an epic tome. And even in bronze, 
you can pick up an ancient shard. It is 1200 gold bars. So if you're in bronze one, it's going to take a while. It's going to feel like a long grind, but eventually you can get this ancient shard. It's got a six day cooldown. So maybe once a week, you can go ahead and pick up that ancient shard, depending on how much 3v3 you're doing. Rare skill tomes, pick those up as well if you need them. But another great place to earn shards, books, and even a champion Drekstar, which I no longer have because I already invested in him and already got him. The next area, which is very, very new to the game, um, the Hydra Clan boss actually contributes to this as well, which is the clan shop go over here to the item pool it does rotate every so often make sure you're picking up the stuff you want but once your clan gets high enough level you can start getting these epic skill tomes as well as void shards on slot 10. slot 10 takes a little while to unlock um, most clans at the time of making this video are not this high not in level 13 yet and these levels are even harder to get but there are some pretty good rewards down here being a legendary book which is not going to be very cheap definitely gonna be on the expensive side of things but with the more ways to add, get clan gold in the game definitely consider investing in the things down here but hey keep in mind once you hit level 13 you can get some epic books and then at level 17 you can start getting some legendary books and some void shards even before that so definitely another nice way to earn some rewards from just playing the game doing your clan shop doing your clan quest your clan quest hydra cvc those are the different ways you can earn some clan gold the next thing is arena reset and this is honestly overlooked by a lot of people i think as well um but the arena reset once a week uh, you go down here to tiers, you can actually see what rewards you can get. So if we look at bronze, bronze one, assuming you're doing your arena matches, you're going to get these. But bronze one, you can get an ancient shard and some gems. We we'll go up here to plat, platinum arena, you can get some void shards, some sacred shards, some legendary books, epic tomes, some gems. The rewards are nice. They may not be worth it for platinum. Now, hopefully they're going to have gold five here very soon. And hopefully the rewards are upgraded from this current setup in gold four with a void shard ancient and books but hey if you are close to promoting to a different rank in gold definitely consider go ahead and pushing try to get somewhere better and get those different rewards depending on where you're at in the arena of course um, the difference between silver and gold could be a void shard for you the next two areas i want to talk about the next few areas are not going to have the i guess variety of resources these are going to be more specific okay the next area is the market make sure you're refreshing the market okay because the market has a potential of having five ancient shards per month so if you can get those definitely try and get those stay active stay refreshing this whenever it's a free refresh don't spend all your gems refreshing this because a lot of times the stuff in here you don't really want to just waste your gems right if you need to refresh it go ahead of course you do what you want with your gems but keep in mind five ancient shards per month i've noticed on my account a lot of times like at the beginning of the month or the end of the month i'll start seeing a lot of ancient shards but just make sure you're at least keeping an eye on this because you can get some some uh some mystery shards which you may want or more importantly you may get some ancient shards make sure you also have at least 200,000 silver because i've seen people where it pops up and they don't have the silver so therefore they can't buy the shards that <laughs> they need right and then they go then they refresh they, like goes to a new cycle and they're just kind of out of luck right um the next thing i want to talk about is dungeons now dungeons um against popular belief don't have a limit with how many shards you can get maybe plarium lowers the drop rate after you've gotten so many but as far as i'm aware the drop rate, one, is very, very low, but two, there is no limit on how many of these shards you can get. So if you farmed infinite amount of times throughout the month, or if you farmed a million times throughout the month, you'd have a lot of shards, but that'd be a lot of money and a lot of energy spent. And we're talking about free to play here. So we're not going to be farming enough to get a significant amount from dungeons. But keep in mind, when you're farming in dungeons, you do have a chance of getting these ancient shards from any of these dungeons. Okay, just jump in here, check out the drops. So Definitely a nice little way to get shards, not a reliable way, not a predictable way, but a way that, hey, you're already going to be doing the farming. So, hey, if you get some shards, perfect. It's excellent, right? Getting an ancient shard from a dungeon drop feels very, very good for sure. Um, the next one is the gym mine. This is not a way you can farm, but make sure when you're collecting gems from all the other air avenues, all the other areas of the game, that if you haven't already invested into the gym mine, make sure you get it. I mean, after 100 days, it pays itself off. This is another thing that you're going to feel better the sooner you get it. Once it pays itself off, you're literally making 15 gems every day. I mean, time until full is 22 hours. So every 22 hours, you're getting 15 gems. Make sure you clear it when it gets max. Click on it every so often. You don't want it to go over cap because it stops producing for you, right? You don't want to make, you don't want it to go past max, which it won't go past it. It'll just stop at max, make sure to claim it, but it's a nice little amount of gems each day. And then, like I said, it pays itself off and it's just free inflow of gems. Next way, which honestly should have been mentioned earlier are first off the referral program. Um, this is a little bit tricky to do. 
Um, there technically is a way you can do it yourself. If you guys want to know, I will leave a link to that video where you can do this yourself using blue stacks. If you guys are interested, it'll be linked up in the corner. Um, but you can get some sacred shards, void shards, epic tomes. If your friends join and play all the way through, you can see all my friends here. They, uh, they quit a while back. So we're going to go ahead and remove some players from our furrow list. And once you get these rewards, that's all. Once you finish all these rewards, you do get this sacred shard down here as well. So you can get a total of four different sacred shards. The next thing I want to mention is the shop. The shop does give you this free ancient shard every, I believe it's seven days, and you get a mystery shard every so often as well, much more frequent, but the ancient shard I believe is once a week. Obviously you can go in here and change your gems that you earn freely into ancient shards as well, which is kind of another way to get free, essentially free gem, or free shards also. With that said guys, I think that is all the ways that you can get books and shards inside of Raid Shadow Legends. Like I said, I went through this several times to make sure I had everything and that I listed all the different possible ways out. And to be honest, when I went through this list, I was actually surprised about how many different ways you can go through and get shards and books and energy and gems. Because when I first started playing Raid, it was definitely not this easy to get all these different resources. It's definitely come a long way. I think it's getting even more and more free to play friendly, while also, oddly enough, encouraging whales and big spenders to spend even more money my free to play account i'm having a ton of fun uh granted right now i'm trying to build up my first six star champions so it's a very very long grind so right now it's not technically a ton of fun but up until this point it's been a lot of fun and i know as soon as i get past this point it'll be even more fun but all the different ways to earn free resources free rewards the daily stuff you get from raid the daily small little pack with some energy sometimes different things just really comes together nicely and I think Raid has made pretty good progress in making the game feel, at least from my impressions, especially with this long list of different ways you can get free resources in the game, feel even better for free-to-play players. So let me know what you guys think, especially if you're a free-to-play player. Let me know what you think. Let me know how does Raid feel playing free-to-play. Obviously, your progression is going to be a little bit slowed compared to everybody else, but you should get a good inflow of resources each and every month, assuming you're logging in, doing your daily stuff. So let me know what you guys think of this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. And yeah, catch you guys in the next one.